Showtime. It's about that time. Let's go. You're right where you need to be. This is G-Com Radio. Hard, hard, radio station. On the planet. Yeah. Powered by Lightblood.com. We certified. Uh. And hosted by Nova Phoenix. Give them that flavor. Stats, check stubs on the bubbly. Out in California, all the Spanish girls love me. Get you to the moon, we can get a little cutty. Uh, life panning out like a movie door. Driving around town, eating sushi rolls. I be on the road, man, the truth be told. They think right now, very looky though. Don't mind where we go, have a doobie roll. We ain't round around, clean round the sushi. Oh, summertime shine. Top down with the heat on. Yeah. It's a summertime shine. Baby, kick your feet up. Yeah. Summertime shine, I can't wait to feel you. Summertime shine, I want to blow the blue. Yes, yes, what up, y'all? What's going on? This is Nova Phoenix with GCOM Radio on iHeartRadio. You just heard McKenna with Summertime Shine. That's a replay on that bonus track. We played them before. We got to play them again. They are the business, man. They are the business they got on. uh, They recently 
a little bit ago they got on uh, uh, I think Billboard they were featured on Billboard getting a, a publishing deal so big ups to McKenna that's what's up and I wanted to play Summertime Shine because a Summertime is officially over and just to gracefully give it its props Summertime thank you for doing all that you did for us folks up here in New York and around the United States of America but now we are in the fall time you can see with the weather man it's like 55 degrees 50 degrees it is fall weather long sleeve shirts light jackets turn on a little heat in the car we are in the new season and we're gonna look into uh towards um uh what do you call it uh ha halloween and um and thanksgiving and i think i might go to october fest or some hollow or whatever fest we're in in, in six flags because uh, I know I remember taking my kid over there to um, to go there when she was much younger. But um, uh, I think she's a little she's a little older now, and I think it'd be fantastic uh, to go to um, to Screen Fest. I think it's called. Um, yeah, man, we'll look into that. So uh, I would like to give a shout out to uh, two important people that were a part of making this show um, happen or or giving it the identity that it does have. Um, I like to give a shout out to Aunt McKenzie. This brother has done the drops for my show for a, a little bit now. He's a great guy. He lives on the West Coast, and he's have he has his own personal journey uh, working with radio himself. I found him online looking for drops for the show, and the brother is what's up, man. I gotta give you much props, but, uh, bro. Big shout out, big shout out to Aunt McKenzie. And also to Chucky, Chucky Beats. He's a German producer, highly skilled in his talents, man. Highly skilled. He actually has a, a YouTube channel called uh, Chucky Beats, and he just pretty much floods his channel with different types of beats. This guy is doing his thing. He also works with um, artists of his own, doing his thing in uh, in, in Germany and other places. But if you want to check out any um, uh, beats from this brother, reach out to him, whatever, man, just just go to Chucky Beats on, on, on YouTube. My man is um, a very talented producer. He does like trap music and old school hip hop. Very impressed with his range. So let's get into the show. Oh yeah, the other thing, man, uh, before I get into the show also, man, I got my Hashi Tashi. Yeah. If you watch Martin, you know what I'm talking about. I got my hashi tashi. What? And I was just bending down to its greatness. And that means I got a new television. I got a new TV, man. Um, man, it's a, it's a, it's a Samsung. It's great. I love my new television. And I have Roku. And I bought the second, uh, 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 I think Jan of Roku or something like that. And now with this TV. It has Roku built in. So I don't need my Roku device. So I had to toss it in the closet. Now, if I had to pick between a hundred dollar device and a and, and and I got this joint for like eight hundred, something like that. Uh, 65 inch, you know, um LED. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I love the screen. I love the picture. I don't even know how to make the picture look like you can be in the movie itself. It's like the people are in there. Um, but man, it's a great television, man, and I'm just, you know, I'm loving it up right now. And what else happened for me this weekend? That's pretty much it, man. I was just trying to get, you know, buying a TV with the fam and, you know, chilling out and, and setting it up and, you know, getting all the apps set from the Roku that's built into it, you know, reestablishing on my... Ah, uh, man, I remember when we had DVDs. Who would have thought the next stage was going to be streaming? Who knew? So now I got like uh, like two stacks of short stacks, really short of DVDs that I have just sitting there and a DVD player that I hardly use. I just download at this point. It's like, okay, the movie's out, download it. The movie comes out in the theater, I don't watch it, I, I download it, you know what I mean, from Fandango. Um, so yeah, man, it's just a new age for entertainment, man, a new age. So what else is going, what happened this weekend? Uh, went out, oh yeah. So um, this didn't happen this this past weekend, but it happened the week before. Continuing to look for some a new gym that I'm going to to work on the other side of my of my diet plan or my healthy lifestyle that I'm trying to um, to, uh, to, to catch up with. And um, I think I'm going to go to this one place. 
And I don't want to say it yet because I, I think I'm going to go to one more gym to check out, really feel it out, and then I'm making my, my decision um, on, on which one it's going to be. So, yeah, that was kind of fun, too. I was thinking about that this, this past weekend, but it's coming up. It's coming up. All right, so let's, let's roll into this show right now because we got a lot to cover. So, I saw Joker, the Joker movie, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix being uh, the Joker, all right, or Arthur Fleck, the man before the Joker. And this movie... This is, I think this is my actual first review, movie review on here, uh, online. I, I, I don't do a lot of reviews because it just takes a lot when you're writing. You got to get your thoughts out. But in this case, um, I think this is my first movie review. Well, anyway, let's get to it. So, man, the opening scene of him contouring his face with his fingers by sticking his fingers. Oh, yeah. Before I, I, I do this, ugh, I got to say... Spoiler review, spoiler review. If you have not seen the Joker, you got to fast forward into the second segment. Sorry about that, folks. Um, Fast forward into it. All right. And so big, big spoiler review. All right. Three, two, one. All right. So we're going into it. So the opening scene of him contorting his face with his fingers in his mouth. I think that it opened the audience to his own personal struggle and pain internally. And uh, and he's in a place where, you know, where you think there should be nothing but happiness because, of course, Arthur Fleck works as a clown. But to see that pain in him staring in the mirror when he's putting on his makeup midway and you see that that old that internal conflict and how he's trying to give himself happiness by pulling apart his 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 lips into a form of a smile and then pulling it down man that to me i was like wow um i think even in that one opening scene it it told you everything you needed to know about arthur fleck and then having that one tear carry the makeup on the side of his cheek right down oh man you saw that this man was tortured the world of the joker is scary it's scary because it mirrors our own um, it, take, it takes place in New York around 19, I think, 81, I heard, 82, early 80s. And me being, you know, born in the 70s, I had an idea what the 80s was like, 85, 86, 87. It was very dirty. Um, there was a lot. New York was, was deteriorating. Uh, we were in the middle of the crack era. Um, thieves, stealing, gangs, all that, you know, hopelessness. And uh, this is what this movie takes. And it's a mix of, of all these things. And it, it, a terrible setting in a time for Arthur Fleck. And it mirrors exactly what, what the 80s was like. To show the despair. To show the hopelessness. But I think it's also a reflection of how we are today. Because even with all this new development, and I say in New York, coming from New York. And it's just not New York. All cities around, whether it's San Francisco, Miami... Atlanta, uh, uh, Baltimore, where you have all this fast approaching development happen, but amongst that, you you see the money and the privilege. Uh, um, just it, it reeks of it, and all the while that this is happening, you have an, an ignored underclass, people that see it and they go to work every day, at the, you know, in their their minimum wage jobs. And they see all this development happening, but yet it does not benefit them. And uh, and that's frustrating because, you know, all this new development means it doesn't mean it's going to alleviate some of the stresses that the working class are going through. But it's for a new class that's coming in, coming in to benefit them, to cater to them. And again, it's a beautiful thing that you see that happening in these cities. But again, you have a large underclass that's really not partaking of that. And that's what adds to the frustration. So you see that in Gotham, in Joker's world of Gotham, how how people are in their state of despair and they see the disconnection and the uh, the the apparent gap between the have and the have nots. And having Arthur Fleck go through this metamorphosis 
within that setting, man, it, 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 it's, it's a powerful, it's powerful. And you see where it kind of, the Joker persona develops within that. Um, as far as how the Joker was seen, I don't know if this is on purpose as far as as the director or the casting uh, agent or manager, whatever you want to call them, picked Joaquin for that because Joaquin lost like 50 something pounds. Right. So he's very frail and gaunt. And typically that's what the, the you know, Joker is about. Joker's not muscular or anything. He's a, he's a very slim guy from the comic books. Um, so and, 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 and gangly. So, uh, of course, you know, Joaquin fit that in his weight loss, but there's something that's specific with Joaquin that, that, that took my eye, his shoulder. I, I don't know if he personally had some sort of injury when he went over his years, but I, obviously you see some sort of, uh, of, uh, of injury that took place and he healed, but it's, it, it, there's a little haunch in his left shoulder and it doesn't quite look symmetrical to his, the other side, his other shoulder. And to me him being Arthur Fleck it, it showed I think it added to the character of the Joker because even Arthur Fleck in his own deformed mental state it showed in his body and you know that he was born with this deformity of mind and of body my cat is right behind me he's being um, extra now and he wants it all this time now he wants to jump, jump on the back of this chair um and to me, that, that, that was perfect for, again, displaying the personality and the character of the Joker, that this was an inevitability that this was supposed to be his change. And, and I see that in the way he contours his body when he was trying to pull the, 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 his clown shoe and I guess to reshape it. And then times where he, uh, I think is when his, he put on his makeup and he looked like a mime and the two other clowns came to his house to say, Hey man, what's going on? I heard your situation, blah, 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 blah. And he placed his hands around the archway of the doorway of into the living room. And he saw him turn his head and it looked so, it looked so demented that you saw glimpses of who the Joker or who Arthur Fleck was becoming as the Joker in the, in, in these stages of his change. And it's this, this, you know, shoulder that looked out of place added to the character of the Joker. I thought that was so perfect and it made, it made him so much more believable as the Joker uh, in this movie. I thought that was, I was wild and weird and it, it, it just looked so sinister and creepy. Um, I think the next thing, um, I think Arthur Fleck turning into the Joker didn't happen with the makeup. I think Arthur Fleck became the Joker when he killed those Wall Street guys on the train. Because I think it, I thought it was great how the writers and of course the director uh, showed that the Wall Street guys were were the were, were the tools of his pain as well. Because everybody always thinks that, you know, when you receive pain and suffering, it's from the criminal element and they're always dirty and disheveled and um, and they look, you know, they're street rats and they, you know, they come for you and that's all they're trying to do is steal your chain or steal your money from you or whatever. No, I thought it was great that it came from Wall Street, guys, because to me, it's also a reflection that pain can come from Wall Street that these folks are not always suit and tie and, 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 and behave properly. They get drunk, they, they get crazy, and they saw Arthur Fleck, and of course they, they were bothering that woman first, but when they saw Arthur Fleck laughing uncontrollably, they directed their, um, their privilege, in, in so to speak, on Arthur Fleck. And when he killed those guys, and he ran, and he ran into that bathroom, and he somehow he closed the door and the way he swept his feet from one side to the next. And he kind of he kind of created this dance in front of the mirror to, to me. He wasn't crying. So it wasn't about like he was like, oh, my God, what did I do? Or or, or I, it's not like he was trying to fight this 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 event or what he did. But more so, he reveled in it. And he was like, oh my God, I just killed people. And he just formed into this waltz 
like he literally and figuratively waltzed into this new being in the bathroom to me that is when he became the joker that was the start of the joker and there were other parts of the movie where it was you saw certain scenes that were significant parts of his change i thought that was great um i like the fact the way he talked to 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 murray i keep on forgetting the guy's name um murray Murray and, and the Thomas Wayne about forgetting the broken, the helpless, the downtrodden that they couldn't feel. He was telling I'm like, what is wrong? He was telling uh, Thomas Wayne, what is wrong with how can you how come you can never talk to people with feelings like as as uh, you're so far apart from who I am as an individual. And I thought that conversation, oh, man, it hit. It hit. I, I, I loved the way he addressed Thomas Wayne. And it's like when it's it's when the forgotten is down to their last is it's oh man it's it's unbelievable how how that was speaking this movie was speaking in so many ways about economics urban decay mental health apathy all of these things this country suffers from um in reality because we do suffer from all of these things uh i like how they made thomas wayne thomas wayne was not some well-behaved you know loving billionaire it was like i want to help all people because that's how the comics and the movies always treated thomas wayne like it but in reality a good portion of billionaires are assholes right they, you know they're like they don't care they're detached they're ego driven uh they feel worthy of their financial position and you know and you see it in so many individuals rich people the billionaires and millionaires Oh, and, and for those countless cases on a personal level when there's no cameras, I'm like, yo, this dude was an asshole. Fuck this guy. Or fuck this woman. You know what I mean? So I like this new version of Thomas Wayne. And it's okay for Bruce Wayne to be different. But maybe Bruce Wayne learned as he was coming up how his father was and say, I don't want to be that. You know what I mean? Um, I thought that was tight. So, all right, I'm going to get out of here. The time is going. Um... And we'll continue the, the Joker review uh, after this next round of songs. So we're going to listen to Says. His album is called, uh, uh, his excuse me, his song is called Proof off the album Glass Bullet. Says, man, tight, tight dude. Check this music out. And right behind him, we, we added some extra music here, is Jameer Mor Morgan. That's Graham's Morgan's son. Uh, Jameer Morgan is an artist himself, and he's got this song called Trodden off his new album called Self Confidence. So check this out. It says uh, the song is proof off the album Glass Bullet, and Jameer Morgan with his song Trodden uh, off his album Self Confidence. Check this too out. You know what you're rocking to? Rocking with the best, uh -huh. only the best. Oh, GCOM Radio. Yeah. So the word around town is I've been swerving Been trying to put the work in I don't know if it's working mm -hmm. Need to see the proof Yeah, hold up Taking a lot of time and effort Take it, say, F it, and quit and jump ship Got bungee cord strapped to ankle Thank you very much, I bounce back Compose the soundtrack and look now I deserve the stunt, just a little Gone split the blunt down the middle Made some paper off, instrumental Got the green lit to ease my mental Mind running like a boss in a wasteful household Mmm, Zan got me out cold Till I rise again and put my pride to the side again You wanna see my head high again? Hands up if you're trying to get it on and get on, keep going, hope it ain't long Don't care how much the time takes uh, I'm trying to get it while I wait So the word around town is I've been swerving Been trying to put the work in I don't know if it's working uh, Need to see the proof Get up, get out, you know what to do So the word around town is I've been swerving Been trying to put the work in Don't know if it's working Woo! Need to see the proof. Get up, get out. Oh, yo. I lack a lack of Lambo. A Grammy horns on my mantle. No, I can't panic. Hey. Things ain't really going how I planned it. And yes, I've sustained damage. Broken a leg when I landed. Coming up from a high that high, I had to adjust. Yeah. Running around and shaking them hands might be a must. The money I touch need to get put into the dream. Yeah. I network to build up my net worth and leave. Yeah. Riding off into the sunset, a sunset boulevard, Hollywood. Uh -huh. Head straight and my body good. I just cut out the dairy, fairly sure. I Secure, prepare for more Praise the Lord, pulling up in the suburban Self-doubt lurking, trying to stay certain huh. 
Don't care how much the time takes, I'm trying to get it while I wait. So the word around town is I've been swerving, been trying to put the work in. I don't know if it's working, hmm? yeah, need to see the proof. Get up, get out, you know what to do. So the word around town is I've been swerving, been trying to put the work in. I don't know if it's working, hmm? yeah, need to see the proof. Get up, get out, you know what to do. in Cape Verde, fly over Kenya just to go to the safari, just to see the lions roar in the morning. Chadding, chadding, 
Gcom Radio, powered by LifeBlood.com. Come join, be a lifer. Practice dollar power and build financial independence. Yes, that was Saves with Proof of the album Glass Bullet and Jameer Morgan uh, with Trodden Self Confidence of the album Self Confidence. Um, you know what it is, man. Good music. Always loving good, to play good music on here. Can't wait to replay uh, both these artists. So before we get into and continue with this Joker review, uh, I'm going to get into business of the week. And that's going to be for a very important company that's uh, making some beautiful headway in what they're doing. So well, let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies, what up? Go. Bringing you the business of the week and its innovative founders. It's what you've been waiting for. Technology is affecting every industry we operate in around the world. No business has been free of the 21st century's turn by AI, computers, automation, and everything under the sun of our technological revolution. Even construction will feel the deep cuts in the near future. One particular corner of the construction business is housing. Houses have traditionally been made by wood, brick, and metal. Right now, new developments have been made since the invention of 3D printing. 3D printing started with, you know, small objects like tools, toys, and, and other doohickeys. Small little thing, right? Now, it's expanding to an even larger purpose. What do you get when you merge the concept of 3D printing with construction? You get IconBuild.com. Icon Build created by Jason Ballard, Alex LaRue, and Evan Loomis wants to solve three problems. Affordability, the average person can afford a typical home. Sustainability, home building can be inefficient and wasteful. And availability, close to a billion people do not have their own domicile. Well, with the use of the Vulcan 2, their first commercially available construction printer, Lava Creek, the Portland cement base mix, and some pretty smart computerized controls they can make a home at the fraction of the cost to a traditionally built home. Watch how Icon provides homes for us all entering the dawn of this new age. Go to IconBuild.com for more info. Okay, man. Um, let's continue with this Joker. This Joker uh, review. So as I was saying, so I like the fact that Bruce and Arthur weren't really brothers because in the movie when he got the um uh, when his when his when it she was the mother was writing a letter saying to, you know the one of the many letters to thomas wayne that he should take care of his son blah 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 turns out his mother was delusional she was demented that's why the reason he went to try to confront thomas wayne at the movie show wherever they were seeing this play and uh and talking to him in the bathroom now, again, he tries to further try to find out the truth. And it turns out when he went to the hospital uh, or to the mental hospital uh, where his mother was at, it turns out that he was not, he was not um, uh, a Thomas Wayne's son. And I like that. And there were people right beside me that were saying, oh, my God, that's a Joker and, and Bruce Wayne are brothers. They were, they liked it, but I didn't like it because I've seen that before in, in, in movies done where you see this this um this unique link between the two main characters with which further spices up the conflict amongst them and i'm like mm, we did that we did that already i mean we know the famous luke i am your father that was been it's way been done way long before and it's been done in movies but i like the fact that the show that his mother was delusional and they're really not brothers however his mother was delusional or or really he was adopted but the fact that his mother let's say was delusional but he also has delusions of grandeur because remember he was taking his medicine and he thought he was rocking with his neighbor so you never know how this information he can internalize this information and continue to believe they have a special relationship uh, b between the Joker and Bruce Wayne or Batman and then they can never really kill each other because that in itself is the interesting link that they could have been brothers but and they both dealt with their own issues differently and the Joker uh, consistently trying to challenge Batman on who he is 
as as who he thinks he is and how Gotham sees him. And they have this never ending battle of trying to uh, correct each other. You know what I mean? The yin to the yang. So I, I, I like that part. And I think it could play in it, it, you can you can expound on that and build on that that relationship if there happens to be a sequel. I don't know how it's going to happen because Joaquin is like what in his 40s or something like that um, in the setting as playing Arthur Fleck. So uh, I don't know how that would work. You're going to have an older Batman, an older Joker to Batman. I don't know. Um, so um, what's next? So in the news, they were saying that um, this might have some negative reactions um, to the public as Joker plays out. They they broke box office record so far. I think last weekend they, they made like 100 million or 90 million domestic. And um, some people are concerned that this may be influential to the masses and people are going to start trying to act this out. Uh, in the real world after seeing this movie. I think it's hogwash. I think it's bullshit. And to be honest with you, um, the unfortunate joke in this whole thing, or irony of this whole thing, is that it's already happening. The ignored are already lashing out. It's in the school shootings. It's in movie theaters. Country festivals in Las Vegas. Churches, clubs, etc. The country continues to ignore the why. They continue to say that there are other things that are the cause of these disastrous, heinous events that are happening in America. And people continue to make it happen because they continue to make the millions of dollars and they've been bought off. The politicians, the celebrities, or whoever can pull the levers to change the way things are happening in this country when it comes to mass shootings. All right? It, it, it's already taking place. We have jokers that are popping up all over the place. And they're taking their own pain and suffering. And the only way they know how to deal with their pain and suffering is by extending that pain and suffering from the people that continues to add to their torment. Their own personal torment. And you know what? I have to say, um, I have to say, uh, I am, I understand where the Joker comes from because I was there. Um, and I'm not saying excluding the mental trauma that Arthur Fleck was going through. I was there, you know, in my younger years, I was jobless. I was depressed. I drank till I threw up in one moment that I could think of. Cause, and I was, I considered suicide because I don't know, I I felt ignored. I, I was lost and I felt that the world or society wasn't there for me. And I had that moment of anguish and despair and that was one particular night evening where it was a rush of emotions and feelings over me and it was a crazy night and I was by myself and you know um, it happened but you know I I never went as far as as suicide because I thought that my life was more important um, and, I, and I thought that it would be a selfish act to take myself away from my family and um, from my friends. But nevertheless, I did feel like that. And uh, I, I snapped out of it. And, but it still had an effect on me and how I dealt with my friends and the choices that I made. Um, and the, the lack of confidence that I had when I moved about. Okay. Um, so this is Arthur Fleck and Arthur Fleck, Arthur Fleck is a lot of people in this country and they've actually taken that they, they've actually taken that torment and internalized it and have lashed out at the public because no one is listening to them. 
And we don't, as Americans, listen to the people that need us the most. We gloss over them. We treat them as pariahs. We treat them as outcasts. And it can seem cool to do that to those in high school. Because we don't, as, as young teenagers, they don't see the, the big picture. And when it happens to them, when this person lashes out to them, people scream out, why? Why did this happen to us? Because we didn't pay attention to the signs. We didn't pay attention that these people have their breaking points and we were the cause to be the instruments of being the final straws being broken in their minds. But I also feel for myself, even I, as Bruce Wayne, because Bruce Wayne suffered, he suffered as well. You know, Bruce Wayne suffered the loss of his parents and he internalized that grief, but he processed it, processed it differently. And I think we are all in some ways like Bruce Wayne and like the Joker. And some of us goes off the deep end like to the Joker. And some of us become Bruce Wayne's and feel like we want to help those that are suffering the same. And I think that's what Joker was trying to tell Batman. That, you know, people will still see you as some freak or some horror show. That you dressing up like this is not going to help people. And, um... And again, that's their lifelong battle amongst each other. How do you deal with your grief? Where where do you place it? Who is it? Who it's exacted upon? Um, and, and that's interesting. And I think I'm a little bit of both Joker and Batman. Uh, I like I love these characters. I grew up with these characters, whether it was in a comics or in the cartoons or something like that. And I've always uh, was a uh, Batman. I always, I always felt Batman. But then there's been different stories told of the Joker, and I'm like, wow, man. In reality, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of like more like closer to the Joker than the Batman, but equal some days. So, all right. Um, and here's the other thing. All right. <clears throat> Lastly, on the Joker, uh, I think the Joker may be gay. Yo, what are you talking about? I know, I'm, <laughs> I know I'm getting at a lot of the hardcore DC comic guys and gals, right? But Joker could be gay. What are you talking about, Nova? Well, there was a part at the end uh, of of the movie, movie uh, when he was on the show with Murray, um, and his responses to Murray was to me was it was like a flirting with the effeminate behavior. And that's, that's, this is how I received it. Because you know a lot of times men could be effeminate and people, oh, he gay and, and he's gay or whatever. And, and people are like, no, he's not gay. He's just, you know, he's just effeminate. Some men have more of the feminine feminine energies um, than others, but he's not, he's not. You know, some men are married and all that, but there's always this question. But I don't know, it just creeped in and out of Arthur's behavior as he spoke to Murray about how he felt about himself and how Murray was treating him. And some, I, I, it, it just, it just peeked out on certain parts and, you know, and look at how he treated Zazie, right? So it, it, Zazie, he felt like Zazie's character was his girlfriend and Zazie came into his life and after he killed this guy, he kissed her and then all of a sudden they started this like wild kind of pair. And I always thought as it was happening, I'm like, man, Zazie's out of his league. Yeah, she's, you know, in his own class. But to me, I was like, how she's with Flex? Flex is like a weirdo. Like, why is she with this guy? I don't understand what, what's. And then it turns out that it was because he wasn't getting his drugs and his own mental instability. He thought all oh, it was all an illusion. He was never with her. And he ended up in the apartment, uh, her apartment. So. And. I thought sometimes we are people and we have these dreams of being others because we don't want ourselves to be the person we think we are. We may have this idea. I don't know. I don't know if it's quite getting across to you guys in that way, but I just feel that Arthur was like, man, I want to be with this girl. I know who I am. But in the ways to get away from himself, he kind of fantasizes himself about being with someone else like Zazie in order to say, no, this can't be me. This is 
this is me. This is who I want to be. And um, that, and of course, it was all made up in his mind, and this is how he dealt with it. But then, you know, he's really gay because you know he's he's only been with his mother, right? He's never been with any other woman, and he fantasizes about this woman down the hall from him. And then when he's talking to Maria, he just he, he I don't know if it was on purpose or this is a part of the character that Joaquin was trying to put into um but it just came off very effeminate and I was like oh man and it just crossed my mind I'm like wow it it, it was jolting me when I was watching that scene and I was wondering if other people were receiving that as well but that's what I was getting I'm like oh wait a second it's is Arthur Fleck gay yo wouldn't that be something if if the Joker was interesting <laughs> now let me tell you this movie shrieks of an Oscar award winning performance from from Joaquin Phoenix and Martin Scorsese it's it's funny how Martin Scorsese recently said to Empire Magazine I don't see them I tried meaning Marvel movies superhero movies I tried you know but that's not cinema <laughs> Honestly, the closest I can think of them as well as well made as they are with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances is theme parks. Yeah. <laughs> what a dig. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experience to another human being. Wow. And here we go with Joaquin's <laughs> portrayal of Arthur Fleck as the Joker. And to me, this is like it's an easy in easy in to get us to get nominated by the oscars and also a win because the performance was a plus a grade a plus and a shout out even to um let me just get to this director's name I, you know sometimes i don't want to lead this guy out um uh, director of joker todd flips phillips right and the writers um, as well, because I think I think the the uh, uh, the um, the writers also should get uh, a, a head nod uh, as well, because that was a beautiful screenplay, man. It was by also also it was, it was Scott Silver along with Todd Phillips. Excuse me. Just yeah, this is just ugh, man. You don't understand. So you know, enough respect to Martin Scorsese. He's made classics, you know, in his day. And uh, but you know you got to give props to uh, everyone involved with this film, and it shows that comic book movies can be considered for Oscar nominations and every other movie nomination, and it can be taken serious. It doesn't have to be hokey. It doesn't have to be cartoonish, and with uh, it can have uh, some weight and substance to the characters that are brought on the screen. So shout out to um, to everyone involved with making the Joker. Br- Beautiful movie. Beautiful movie. That's what's up. Hand clap to them. All right. So um, let's get into our next song. It's uh, uh, Danielle, I believe. Daniela. Again, I'm getting her name wrong. I don't know. I wrote it. I wrote it kind of crazy. Maybe I wrote it quick, but it looked like. So let me just go and make sure I get her name. Uh, Rizai. Um, I think I believe it's Dan- Danielle. Danny, Danny, Dan, Danny, Danny. Why did I have Danielle on here? See how when you write quick, that's what happens. Her name is da- Danny, D-A-N-I-E-E, with her song "Go Away." Check this out. I think she's a very talented MC. And um, going into "Lucid," right up behind that with "How." Mm, not I can't play that either. See, this is the thing, and I'll let you know. I wanted to play this joint "How You Feeling" um, on the show. But I also upload to YouTube and he does this song that has a Cosby thing to it. I thought it's beautiful. He's got a lot of hits on it. And um, but then, you know, I had this conflict, you know, this I was like, oh, man, this uh, they're going to give me problems um, because uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, YouTube is also giving me issues with the joints I got. So instead of playing uh, that joint, 
uh, I was going to play How You Feeling. I'm going to play Trust Nobody. It's available now. So check out Danny with Go Away and Lucid uh, with Trust Nobody. And if if I can, maybe I'll feel uh, brave. But YouTube be tripping with this copyright thing. Um, uh, maybe I'll play that How You Feeling. But right now, it's going to be uh, Lucid with uh, Trust Nobody. All right. So check out these two joints. All right. Peace. Gcom Radio. Trust 
My mama went to work, big bro was in the kitchen Had them fiends dancing like they knew addition Niggas trying to link, I keep them at a distance All that fake love come with bad intentions Yeah, we are back. That was Danny, as I said, with Go Away and Lucid with his song, Trust Nobody. We'll uh, look into, I'll think about playing that, that Cosby joint. Or you can go to his YouTube page. Um, I guess you could just type in Lucid and you could find it there. The name of that uh, Cosby show theme uh, music that was in the song was How You Feeling. All right, so before we get any further into the third segment, you know what we have to do. We have the news you need to know. You got to hear this one. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, around the world and right in your neighborhood, it's the news you need to know. Paralyzed man walks in an exoskeleton. Over the years, inventors and medical professionals have created prosthetics to help limbless people to live close to normal lives. In this case, a similar team of people have allowed a paralyzed Frenchman to use a brain-controlled exoskeleton for the first time. After an accident in a club, Tabolt, the name of the paralyzed man, suffered a cervical spinal cord injury, one out of five result in all four limbs partially or completely losing motion. The process requires the installation of two recording devices between the brain and the skin. This allows the device to tap into the sensory motor cortex which controls sensation and motor function after 24 months of prep work for the exoskeleton and tests involving Tabalt using a video game avatar for practice he was able to operate the machine with 14 joints and 14 degrees of motion in the exoskeleton Tabalt was able to improve considerably in the avatar game and limited movements in the exoskeleton itself Stefan Chabardes, neurosurgeon from the CHU of Grenoble Alps, France, says, Our findings could move us a step closer to helping tetraplegic patients to drive computers using brain signals alone. Perhaps starting with driving wheelchairs using brain activity instead of joysticks and progressing to developing an exoskeleton for increased mobility. A new deal with the IMF and the Congo. The IMF is looking forward to a new financing partnership with the Democratic Republic of Congo. They're looking toward a six-month short-term program with the government. In July, a visit was made to do an annual review since 2015. The new DRC president, Felix Tshikheti, has sought to repair ties with the IMF. The previous deal fell apart with his predecessor, Joseph Kabila. Uh, the IMF rep states they want to tackle poverty, corruption, and strengthen public finance. A $532 million three-year loan was halted years ago after the ex-president Kabila failed to publish details of a 2011 mining deal. And that is the news you need to know. All right, so we are back to get this third segment going. And uh, for this show, uh, it rem what I'm about to talk about, it reminded me of an old, old fairy tale, or no, or what do you call it? One of those songs for little babies, little children. And everyone knows this uh, little uh, ditty. Please sing along with me or say it with me. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Yeah, that was such a lovely story back in the day. And it's been everywhere. It's been in... Uh, and what was that movie called when you had, you saw Humpty Dumpty? It was Alice in Wonderland. And you saw Humpty Dumpty. Oh, yes. And he was in commercials, all that. Well, currently, um, this is related to uh, the impeachment. The impeachment story. What's happening with, uh, with Trump? He's kind of like, it's funny how this song relates so much. This little ditty relates so much to what he's doing. He's Humpty Dumpty, and he's sitting on the wall, that supposed wall he wants to build that you know it ain't happening. And I can't believe why, why Trump folks keep on falling for the okie doke, but they, they, they keep on going for it. 
And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. And right now, he's fallen off the wall and um, he's cracking. He's cracking under this impeachment fiasco. So, turns out there's a second whistleblower come from the intelligence, commu intelligence community that says they have first-hand knowledge of Trump's dealings um, with uh, the Ukrainian government. And it, it's funny how this is all coming together. A second one. A second one for this foolish thing. Uh, uh, and now there's two whistleblowers. Now, um, a lot of people are getting talk, talking about this impeachment thing. And I have I went through my own uh, little light research. And personally, I don't even think that he's going to... Uh, get impeached i think there's a lot of a hoo-ha hoo about this situation i don't even know why the democrats took so long to bring impeachment articles to the table but because he's done other things that were impeachable and all of a sudden this comes out and they're saying okay nancy pelosi says she's going to come forward and 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 she wants to put forward some impeachment hearing okay whatever um I, 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 I'm just, I don't have confidence in it. So I did my, my background on it and everybody knows what this is about, right? So he pressured the Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden's son, Hunter, Hunter Biden. And on top of that, he used a $400 million military aid money that was going to go to Ukraine, uh, as leverage, right? So it got caught on tapes. They tried to hide it and came out the whistle blew blew the lid off of it and all of a sudden we have this this circus is happening right now all right so my first thought is okay this is out there everybody's making it getting excited about it and i said first let's see if this is a distraction for something more sinister because I, i've already peeped you know how trump be getting down here something comes out he says something crazy on tweeting and then everybody getting excited all the news media latches onto this new thing and all the while some some you know this crazy sinister uh legislation that they're trying to pass and 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 push through hard so my thing is Notice that and now have the second or third person or fourth person say, OK, look, what else is happening in Congress? Just to be clear that this ain't going to be some kind of like okie doke. You're going to just try to bedazzle me with this thing. You know, media loves doing. So once all that gets to the side and now you're dealing with this impeachment thing, and I think people got to realize that there's, it's a process. And the reason why I'm not getting excited about it, because you just can't. Um, just impeach somebody because you feel so. So the House of, the, the House of Representatives has to um, put together, uh, what do you call it? Oh, let me stop there. Let me start this so I can stay on call. I, I always like to set the timer so I know how much I'm running and I keep my eye on its timer. So, um, so the House of Rep must put forward the evidence of impeachment, right? Okay, well, what is exactly that this guy is talking about that's illegal as the president of the United States? And the Speaker of the House gives approval for to do the impeachment proceedings. Okay, that's Nancy Pelosi. So the next, the next, the investigation happens. All you know, the committee puts together the evidence. You know, they 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 deliberate over it. Okay, what's going on? Once they put together this dossier, this book or whatever, then they present it to the full house if the house agrees with it which would have to be 218 reps or representative out of the 435 seats has to agree to forward with the impeachment all right and then after everyone agrees in the in the uh, with this impeachment then it gets pushed off on to the senate all right it gets pushed off to the senate so you get some i don't know representatives of the house take the, this this package and they walk over to the Senate and say, hey, here's our uh, articles of impeachment. Look over it. All right. So then you'll have the president's defense lawyers come opposing and then they'll, you know, haggle over it or whatever, whatever like that. And once all this evidence is presented, the Senate votes and it must be a two thirds majority. So it has to be 67 senators out of a, out of 100 seats have to agree. And right now, the Senate is made up of 53 Republicans and 45 Democrats. 
Mm, so what do you think is going to happen? You will need all the Dems to vote for impeachment. And about 15 Republicans or something like that has to agree. 15. Now, knowing the track record of Republicans, you think all of a sudden they're going to get an epiphany or change of heart and say, oh, my God, the, the president has been acting unpresidential. He's a, he's a traitor. He's dealing with other countries. Yes, I agree. Do you think that Republicans are going to go forward with agreeing to this impeachment? Now, also, mind you, no president has ever been impeached in his country. None. There was Clinton. There was, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, I am not a crook. Um, uh, Nixon, all right? Nixon, Richard Nixon. And then there was a president like, he, like we're talking about decades, early, early, some, some guy named Thomas, whatever. You know, we're talking about the 19th century, man. And this guy, they put articles together and it still failed back then, all right? So, so far you had that guy, didn't happen. Nixon, they were putting it forward. He stepped down because it was getting too hot. And then Clinton, he, that didn't go through. So he was never technically impeached, right? And now we have this jerk, just jerk off, right? Do you think the party, Republican Party has stood by this dude? Yo, literally a meteorite could be coming out of the sky, all right? And they can avert the meteorite. You will have Republicans and be like, yo, it's it, it, no, it's not happening. There's no reason to avert because there's no meteorite. Because Trump says that there's none. Dude, hell will freeze over before Republicans you get 15 Republicans in the Senate to go with impeachment. So all of this is for naught. Now, how can you sway Republicans? Well, it has to be on some real treacherous, treasonous, you know, and, you know, presidents don't do this. And the reason why he's this guy get caught up on all this because he doesn't listen to nobody. Nobody's talking to, to this fool on Trump in, in his cabinet to say, Mr. Mr. President, this is not really legal. Like, that's not going to look good. But no, because you know why Trump don't listen to anybody? Because he's running the presidency like it's some sort of corporation. And even though that we say United States is a corporation, really, there are certain rules and regulations that you just can't just go just go buck nutty up in there and say you can do whatever you want. All right. Because it, it it's you it can't. Right. You got to work those loopholes or work those technicalities. And and Trump is like a bull in a glass shop. He don't give a damn. He knocking over everything. He he don't care. I'm doing it. Even if he is getting proper counsel, he was like, whatever, shut up. You're fired. So, you know, the only two Republicans that we know right now that's saying anything is Republican Joe Roll, Walsh, who's running for president. And he's calling Trump a traitor. And wow, my microphone is slipping. Um... And um, there's another uh, Republican, yeah, another challenger for the 2020 election. It's re uh, Representative Mark Sanford. And he's calmer about the whole situation. He, he's just saying, let the process take place at a respectable pace. You know, let's not jump to conclusions, blah, 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 blah. And that's the only Republicans right now that's talking any mess. Everybody else is staying party loyal. Party loyal. Everybody's saying party loyal. Now, it's funny how Trump be acting because I swear when he gets backed into a corner, this <laughs> yo, this dude is straight. Wow. Trump ratted out Pence. He dry snitched on Pence. <laughs> if I was Pence, I would be like, yo, man, why are you mentioning my name, man? He was like, well, you made this call. He was like, well, Trump was like, I didn't. What are you talking about? I, I said nothing funny in this call. You, you, you know, Pence had two other calls with the guy. I'm like, yo, dude. What? <laughs> Yo, Trump is like the, as they said online, he's the Takashi 69 of presidents. He's writing everybody out. He, Yo, look, he is. I, if I'm going down, I'm taking somebody with me. All right. And um, this dude. I, Yo, even Rudy Giuliani, Trump's lawyer, says he got receipts on one of the interviews, one of, I think on Fox or something like that. Now, my thing is, why would he say that? Why would Rudy, Judy, Rudy Giuliani say that he got receipts, he's got records and all these things, if he could be protected under attorney-client privilege? Why would he say that? Why do you say he has all these records? You know why? 
He's saying that on camera because essentially he's saying, listen, if anybody drops dime on me, I got receipts. That's even he was talking to Trump because I'm sure he heard what he said about Pence. And he said, you, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I got something to say. If somebody wants to say something. I got it. I'll share it. But he because he's protected. He's protected. Now, you know, I know the law, you know, lawyers and attorney client privilege. But, you know, obviously that's that can be abused. And, um, you know, they're saying that Giuliani was running over Ukraine and handing, handing over documents and all that for 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 Trump. Like, why would a president's personal lawyer be handling political business uh, for the presidency with other countries? Because it's called attorney client privilege. All right. He's not going to he doesn't have to say nothing if it's going to incriminate his client. OK, it's a let me tell you, it's a total fuck fest. <laughs> Everybody's fucking each other. It's crazy. Um, and you know what? And Trump is erratic, man. He's showing signs of wear, man. You can see it when the reporters talk to him when he was talking with this one guy when he's with the finish or whatever other president, foreign president. He was like, yeah, he was shutting down a dude like he was some kind of. <laughs> A gangster. No, no. You're not going to ask me no more questions. You're done. Ask this president over here. You talked to... Yo, it was crazy. I'm like, this guy's talking reckless. He's talking reckless. And he just does... He doesn't do well. And then he goes to the Finnish president, the Finnish president, for, for the reporter to ask him about it. And then he takes over the question anyway. The Finnish president was like, yo, dude, uh, I can answer myself. I'm a grown man. Uh, this is... Yeah, look, I just can't understand... And there's no way to just rein this guy in. There's no way to rein in this guy, man. Republicans are just letting this dude just just go. He's like Trump is like is like riding a bull or, or or riding a horse. You know what is it in in the, in 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 the West, man? They do a lot. They ride bulls and horses and all that. And it's like that. You get on this bull right here. Vile can deals because <laughs> you're going for a ride <laughs> and you might get hurt, you might get gored somehow. And this wild bull is just gonna just go crazy, and you could get hit in the ribs with one of his horns mistakenly. And you're gonna tell it's I can't see how Republicans are still dealing with this guy. So it also turns out that said Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is ignoring last week, he ignored a subpoena to hand over documents last Friday to to the House, I believe, the committee, to see what State Department people were involved in this Ukrainian conversation. Can you believe that? If somebody got subpoenaed, a regular person, I'm not listening to no subpoena. Yo, they get, yo, they get, get thrown in jail. They're like, you don't want to listen to no subpoena. But yet this dude is like, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm like, yo, where is the rule of law? Who is, who is taking control of this like because right now this this administration is going buck wild they're like i ain't answering jack we doing it this way ba 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 i mean it's it's crazy man it's crazy and to deal with this four more years i'm i'm personally tired of it i am personally tired of this this business of Democrats or this whole presidency thing because it's like where is the control and we're talking about more about some reality show excitement drama dynasty drama than actually dealing with the problems at hand at this country left and right this guy's tweeting something stupid some asinine and then he'll say something in regards to other people or immigrants or or trying to push together push out legislation to do certain things and it's against the rule of law and it's going crazy you know gutting the 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 the, uh, the epa and taking back legislation so they can drill or do something that is dangerous to the environment and then it's it's abortion all these man listen i'm tired of it. i'm i'm telling you i am fatigued and i'm not a democrat or republican i really don't feel him and i speak to i actually speak to trump pro trump people and they're like no, he's not doing nothing wrong. There is nothing we can say. Nothing. I mean, literally, he would have to shake. The devil would have to come out through a steamy, uh, uh, hot 
smoking crack in the earth itself and shake hands with a man before somebody says, okay, this guy's not right. There is nothing you can say. This guy is just, it's just, I'm just tired. I'm fatigued with all this. Just deal with the problems at hand in this country, man. And then another thing I don't like is, you know, it's like the, the Republicans, anything they say, it has messed up. Oh, the Democrats, Democrats. And anything the Democrats say, oh, it's the Republicans. It's the Republicans. Everything is a farce. And I'm tired. If you get people, if, 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 if I, 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 to me, I see it like this. Everything, every chance you get and you say Democrat or Republican in line, the Democrats are doing something, the Re Re Republicans are doing something, it's them, they're the evil guys. Every time they do that, you program the masses to think on a level of Democrat and Republican. Anything evil is always the other side. If you can program people to think that the problems of what's happening, that what you're trying to do to run the country is the opposing party's issue, or it's the fault of the opposing party, you miss the point on how this country got into this place that it has outside of some party politics. You miss a point and it's on purpose because I watch TV and I say, well, it's the Democrat. Well, it's the Republicans. And it's this back and forth thing. And you have people, when I go out there and I talk to folks, you have people that only think in the in a in a in a in the context of party politics. Everything comes out of the Democrat that's wrong, everything comes out of the Republican is wrong. And you do, we miss a point that it's the elite that is controlling the government in general. In general. That's creating the issues we have in uh, um, we have ineffective politicians that have been bought, lobbyists, money is mountains and but fuck, yeah, I'm telling you, loads of money is falling in politicians' hands. That's why they can't make a decision on, on guns. That's why they can't make a decision on abortion. That's why they can't make a decision on the environment. That's why they can't make a decision about the economy. That's why they can't make an, a, a, a decision about our debt that's going wildly out of, out of control. That's why we can't make a, a, a decision on jobs in this country. That's why we can't make a decision on the infrastructure that's falling apart. All right. That's why we can't make a decision about anything that actually does something for the people, that benefits the people, that changes. Now, the general feeling is, well, you know what? From one president to the next, how has your life been changed dramatically, whether they're Republican or Democrat? That is my question. I forgot where that was posed. I don't feel any difference. Money keeps on getting uh, uh, flying out of my pocket. I got to deal with my health care. My health care is in shambles. And Obamacare, it started out as a good idea, but it got gutted. That's why when I, a pro-Trump guy is like, oh, Obamacare is terrible. No, but you don't understand the story. The how, as the process was going through, it got, it's like sending out a, a, a paper airplane into the sky. And as it's ascending, shots ring out and it shoots that shit full of holes. And then now people got to deal with an ineffective healthcare system again. Okay. It is asinine and it's tiring. And I'm standing outside of this and I hear Democrats and Republican people arguing with each other. And I'm like, I, the, the, the theatrics that I see and how people have become the mouthpieces for what they hear on a Sunday morning news show. This is ridiculous. This is re utterly ridiculous, and all we're doing is just circling the drain. While we argue about all these things, all we're doing is circling the drain down to the point where people want to get so frustrated, huh, you might have a Joker situation. And then you know what they're going to do? They're going to blame the Joker movie on people when the problem existed here for 50 years, 60 years. We got to get out of this, man. We got to st we got to start stepping back from the television, start talking to each other. I'm like, forget about Democrat, forget about Republican, forget about capitalism, forget about socialism, forget about Marxism, forget about Leninism, forget about all these social structures, throw it out the window. What do you need in order to live? Food, clothing and shelter. That's what you need to live. That and dealing with health care. That's what you need to let a proper system. 
dealing with the things that affect you as an American, as a human being, what do you need in order to have a quality life? But then when you break it down to party politics, you start missing the point. You see that? Yeah, I'm right there, man. I, I'm, I'm talking right next to my window. All right, see the motorcycles go by. I don't have a, I don't have a fancy studio like some people. But you're going to deal with it. You know what I mean? So anyway, that's what we're dealing with right now. And now all of a sudden, it's, it's a slick, it's a slick distraction. It's a slick tool to use to distract people from the issues at hand. Who is the source to our problems? What is the, the, the root cause of why this country is in the condition that it's in? Why? Huh? Can we get... Can, that's why they destroyed investigative journalism. Because with investigative journalism, you start picking apart the layers. Peeling back the layers. Picking apart those little things and brushing it to the side. Like, for, uh, like uh, criminal forensics. If that's the proper name for it. Dusting away the little the little specks and the pebbles and getting to the root cause. Oh, this is the cause. That's why there's always opinion pieces on, on as far as the media is concerned. Nobody does investigative journalism anymore. This is the problem that we're in. Anyway, so um, let's see what happens with this Trump impeachment thing. I don't think it's going to go much anywhere, but get people excited and heated and uh, get them all emotional. All right. Um, thank you guys for listening to the show. We knocked out one more. Let me tell you, I got all this at the at the last minute. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to talk about this uh, this Sunday? Um, and I, like I said, I, I, I record uh, on Sundays and, um, and it broadcasts or it comes out on Wednesdays. So, um, so I do appreciate you guys. Now, one more thing before I go out of here, lightblood.com. We're here to create a new forward thinking community of people that are centered around human issues and dealing with the issues that we have at hand and solving it. The, the problems are not somewhere out in the air and we can't get to it. It's, it's somewhere around the orbit of Mars. No, it's right here. The answers are already here. Everything that I talk about, everything that I bring up, all the issues all correlate to lifeblood.com because lifeblood.com is not about being a social media site. This is kind of like a social experiment. Can we actually enact the things that we talk about to each other on social media and be contributors to the development of a new world? Because every part, every single piece of technology uh, discussion, if you want the world that you want, you can do it just by going in a circle, corralling in a circle, getting together, talking to people, being a voice to your network, whether it's a thousand, two thousand, five thousand people, and start developing the things that you need to build a society that you want. And it comes like, and I always say, from county to city to state to the country to continent, it doesn't matter where you're from. You can do it. Don't wait for your government. Don't wait for politicians. You can do it yourself. Create the community that you want. Use the tools of technology that has been developed. Um, with your neighbor right next to you and create the world that you want. You can do it. Fund each other. Fund fund your, your passions. Develop those passions. Let's create this new 21st century world that we so uh, we want so badly. Okay? Go to lightblood.com, show up, uh, sign up, and, um, and let's get it started. All right? So I'm out of here, folks. Thanks for listening to me. I'll see you next. Check it. You just listened to GCOM Radio, powered by, by Lightblood.com for the global community. We worldwide, baby. Worldwide. See you in the next go round. From right here to your town, we out.